Hi again, everybody. Well, this video is going to be the final in the series of my all AMD computer build. As you may recall, I originally put it into the Thermaltake V200 case, and then I tried it out in that DYI case, the white one. Looked pretty good, but it didn't perform well in terms of thermals. And then I went ahead and just for the heck of it, tried it out in my case that I have destined for my supercomputer, the Corsair Air 540 case. It did okay in that one, but that's not where it's going to be. It's going to go back now into the Thermaltake V200. However, I'm going to put it in there in its final configuration. With all of the cable management done and the RGB finalized. So, if you get anything out of this video that you find enjoyable or useful in any way, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. That would be very helpful. Okay, now I have the case open, this Corsair Air 540, and I'm going to start disassembling it. I'll start by taking out the two terabyte hard drive that I have installed back here. Since it's in a hot swappable tray, I should be able to just pinch these and pull it right out. There we go. And then I can actually take it out of the tray pretty easily by just spreading it open a little bit. And I can put the hot swappable tray back in. The next thing I'll do is I'll remove the video card. So the video card should be able to take the power off here. Take a screwdriver, remove two somewhat thumb screws, but I usually use a screwdriver to at least get them started. Pull these out. Then I have to reach down in the bottom here, right down in this section here, and I got to push that little latch down as I pull the entire card out. There we go. And there's the video card. And since it's going right into another case, I won't bother putting on the LAN protector right now. I'm putting all of this down on an anti-static mat that I'll show a picture of in a little bit. Now let me just start disconnecting things. Now the front of the case is completely empty. Let's turn it over. And now from back here, I can take off the SSD and the power supply. Let me take the SSD out first. I'll disconnect the cables. And then this should be able to just come out. Pull this little lever over and the SSD is now out. And then I'm going to remove the four screws that are in the back of the power supply. Now, as I look to the side, I do see one more thing I forgot to do. I want to put these I.O. connectors back in. I have them saved, so I'll put those in. Put the plexiglass side on first, put that in. I have the two thumb screws for that. And then I'll do the other side. Don't want to scratch the plexiglass. I did pull off the protector. So I do have it on a soft tabletop, which is good. And I'll put the final two thumbs. And in this case, we'll go back in its original box and we'll be ready to move on to the other case. Here are all the parts that I pulled out of that Corsair case laid out on an anti-static mat. The motherboard, the video card, the SSD drive, the hard disk, two terabytes, the power supply. Also, I will be adding in the remote control for the RGB and a new exhaust fan that will be RGB as well and some extra cables that go along with that. Okay, now the thermal take case. Let's get all of that stuff into here. The first thing I'll do is I'll take this little protector off the side here, get this out of the way. The slot protector. Keep the pieces together. That's the safest way to do it. We'll put this aside. 
and I'll have room for the video card when I want to put it in there. The two slots are already cut out as we did last time, right? Just leave that alone. All of the studs are still the same way they are. Now this actually has a place to screw in the motherboard. So there's nine actual screw-in connectors, unlike the other case. Oh, by the way, if you ever wonder why you see so many motherboards being sold without the shield, well, when I went to put the, <laughs> the case away, the Corsair, I found that I had not removed this. Always make sure you remove the IO shield if you're going to remove the motherboard. So now I can put that in, but before I'll do that, I will take this fan out since it's being replaced. So let me first, this is the best time to do it. That way I can add the new one after the motherboard's already in. That'll make it a lot easier. Okay, now we're ready to put the motherboard in. Well, before I do that, don't forget the IO shield. Now it has to go oriented with these voice connectors the other way. So it's going to go like this into it. Always take a look at the fingers, especially a used one. Like this one has now become. Make sure that they're sticking out sufficiently and that they're not bent in a way that would make them more likely to interfere with the connectors. Just a good double check. Go through and look at them very carefully. Make sure none of them are really out of the way. So it's going to go in this way. So we'll put this in here. Again, you try to push one corner in, the other one pops out. So you got to sort of hold it, slap it in. And that's in. That wasn't that bad. As I recall, this one was pretty easy to do originally as well. Let me get the motherboard. And again, you dip it in this way. You go into the IO shield first. Always look at the uh, connectors and make sure that they are lining up correctly as you do it. If you think you bent one, pull it out and take another look at it. There we go. That actually looks pretty good right there. Looks like they're all in place in the right place. I don't see any that have gone away. I will double check that after I get one screw in though. Let me get one screw in. And the one I'm going to pick is where you would normally have the stud right here in the middle. I'm not going to go all the way down, just enough to hold it in place. Okay. Then I can come over here and double check to make sure that I have no fingers blocking anything. There are no fingers in the way. Now you see that finger there? That finger's the wrong way. So now I gotta pull that screw out. I didn't see it from the other angle. So it's always good to double check that. Take this screw out from the inside. So now that the motherboard's back out again, I will bend this little connector back out of the way so it doesn't get caught on the other side of the actual network connector. It's a really bad one to get connected on. Get that one out of the way too. And then I will get the motherboard back in there and see what it looks like. Okay, let me do it this way for illustrative purposes. Get the motherboard up in there. And we can see it as it goes in. We gotta make sure that that connector, which it's now, it's not interfering with the connector for the network. So once I've done that, I can now hold it in place while I get a screw in. The same exact screw, the middle one, won't go all the way in, just enough to hold the motherboard in place like that. Make sure all the fingers are out of the way. That looks much better. Okay, now I'll just put the remaining screws in to the motherboard to hold it in place. Okay, all of them are down. Let me double check this. Make sure there's no fingers in the way of this. Looks good. Okay, one thing that I noticed as I looked into the motherboard case again, the little screw for the M2 was in a little plastic bag. I did not put it on the motherboard. That's a good habit, even if you don't have an M2, to put that screw there so that you don't lose it. So what I'll do here is I'll put that little screw inside of the stud that's meant for that, and it'll be stored there. I will just snug it down, and that way I will not lose that little screw. I'm going to install all the front panel connectors. Okay, I'm going to do the front panel connectors. That's on the JFP1 connector. Now, I won't show this in detail. I'll probably speed through it because this is something that you've seen before. Now I'm going to put the fan in while I can see it clearly before I put the video card in.
where I put the video card in. Let me get the power connector, PWM connector, connect it up. Much easier, and even this is not easy when you look at it to get that in there, but there we go. Let me also put a tie wrap on it while I'm thinking about it. Let me push that down below the graphics card. And I'm going to push this one down below the graphics card as well. So both of those cables are going to be below the graphics card so I can connect them up together. And now it's time to put the graphics card in. There we have it here, sitting on the side waiting to be used. And we'll just line it up so it's plugged properly and make sure it's connected to these things here in the end properly. And then we'll just push it down in place. And these cables should be free that are underneath the front of it. There's a nice gap there. So that should not be a problem. Put these in here before I forget to keep it secured. And just for the heck of it, let me be complete. This is its final home. I'm going to also put the others that came in the package. Two others. Put them in place again so they don't get lost. I decide to put another I.O. card in here. They're ready to go. So all of these screws are now in place. Let me put this little guy back in place. The little bracket to hold them all down. Just push it a little bit. Make sure it's nice and snug. And now that's in place. Down to the bottom like that. Make sure I can get to those connectors there from that opening here. So that'll look nice and neat. So let me go ahead and secure that in place. Turn it over and it will go right over here approximately. Okay, it's the same screws that hold the motherboard in. So I just have to reach underneath here, hold this up, get a couple of them in. We are good, so I can reach the cables right from that porthole right there. So now I want to put the hard drive in this cage, but I want to try to screw it from the other side this time. So I believe I can pull this out. There we go. Don't want to take it off the top, and I may have to pull this fan out. This is going to be a permanent installation, and that way I can get to the screw holes for this side of the hard drive. It won't go far. Let's take it off temporarily here. the fan is off temporarily so I can get to the screw holes here for the hard drive. So when I put the hard drive in to this little section here I'll be able to screw these two screws from this side. That's the two terabyte hard drive that'll be the larger storage hard drive. Okay let's get this hard drive in place here. Now I want the connectors to come out the back and I want it to be oriented this way so it's going to go in such and I'll put it right here on this second shelf. And we're done. Let me get the fan back on. I can now push this back down in place. Now I can work on the back. Okay, now let's get the power supply in. It's got to go this way because I want the filter to be filtering the air that this fan will suck in. As we talked about last time, we've got to be careful of these wires. So get this guy and try to maneuver it. And these are the ones that are connect up to the various components, motherboard and video card and I.O. as necessary. So I'll put the I.O. separately. I'll do that last. Let me get the connectors in their appropriate place. I have to connect some hard drives. So now I have the two SATA connectors right in here. The SSD is in SATA 1 and the second 2 terabyte is in SATA 2. So at this point, it's just cable management and wire tie appropriately, but I want to make it look good.
Okay, now for the final piece, which is the RGB. I have this three-way splitter. So I'm going to split this out, and this will be connected to the controller, which will be wireless, or we can also use the infrared remote on it if we want to. And it gets its power from a Molex. Now it just so happens that I have a Molex connector right here. So what I will do is this will plug in over here for now. So that's where it will get its power. And as I showed you when I made this connector, it was just to tap off the 12 volts from that. The controller will go back here. And I'll try to reach out over to the side here to pick up the IR if I choose to do that. I'll just sort of feed this underneath here. What I'll do is I'll tie this to this. Then I've got to get the splitter pushed up underneath the front. See if I can bring it through. After connecting up the other stuff through it, it's going to connect here. So let me get the other cables fed through. I think we're good. I think at this point what we're facing is a power on test. You have to take my word for it. I have not tested it yet since I hooked it up. I got a keyboard and I got a mouse. I will hook these up. Oh, right handy. I also have a video display. Let me set that up. Got a display cable here. I haven't even opened up yet. Hook this guy up. Put the display port up. One of the connectors on the video card. And let's fire this guy up and see what it looks like. Turn the power supply on. Monitor's coming on. We hit the power on button. There it comes. Do we have any video? Oh, I didn't put this on yet. Okay, keyboard and monitor are on. I see it coming up. Hey, I see Windows. Let me log on. And we have Windows up. So it worked. Do I see the second hard drive? Let me go in here and go into this PC. And I see a drive D, 1.81 terabytes. So we're good. Now for some quick performance testing. I compared the original configuration of the case that came from the manufacturer with the addition of the extra fan at the rear of the case. The first thing was crystal disk mark. It shows a slight improvement, but not a lot possibly due to the increased airflow with that extra fan. Similar results with Cinebench, a very, very slight improvement, but not a lot. Then the Heaven Benchmark, as you can see, again, a very slight improvement. And then finally, the important results, which were the heat testing that I did using Hardware Info. And as you can see, the idle temperature did drop a couple of degrees. The maximum temperature, though, only dropped about a half a degree. So it didn't change too much, but at least it was all in the right direction. Well, that concludes the series on my all AMD computer build, at least for now. Maybe future upgrades might reawaken it, but for right now, it's got in it what I want it to have. It has all the configuration and cable management and RGB the way I wanted it. Once again, if you found this video usable in any way, whether it was enjoyable or you found something interesting that you learned out of it, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. If you can, give me one of those little likes too. In a couple of seconds, my head is gonna pop up over here. Just go ahead, click on it, follow along, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to talking with you again soon.